Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this series is all about creating your very own first person shooter game in Unity. It's a redesign of a series I did a long time ago which is now severely out of date and this one is just bringing everything into the modern day and age. So this series will be designing and building a game with the mechanics of a first person shooter that you would see in various different kinds of games these days and you can adapt them to be your own style of first person shooter. And it is designed with you, the viewer, in mind and the great thing is you don't need any prior knowledge in Unity or programming to actually follow along with this series. You'll be taught it all in each video as we go along. So the aim is for absolute beginners, as well as people who've used Unity and would like to learn a bit more, and bring everybody to a level where they can freely design their own first person shooter quite easily. They know where to go to do things, they know how to get hold of things, and know how to code in many different ways. So you'll be taken from a beginner to an intermediate level to a more advanced level as we go through the series. And if you want to know anything particular, you know, don't be afraid to comment. Uh, we'll be programming in C Sharp for every single script and we'll be using Visual Studio, which comes bundled with Unity, to do all of that. Finally, this series will work in all versions of Unity as long as you're using something from at least 2015. Some menus may look a little different if you're in the future. Uh, I'll be using, to start off with at least, Unity 2020, um, but by the time 2021's out, uh, which we'll cover in just a few minutes, uh, or 2022, 23, you know, everything will work as normal because the engine itself at its core is always going to be, well, pretty much the same, just things get improved and moved around. So realistically, when you have Unity installed uh, from unity.com you'll be presented with a unity hub and the unity hub which is this thing right here is a place to contain all your installs and project files for everything you create so the first thing you'll want to do is actually install a version of unity so make sure you're on the installs tab down here you'll need to click on add and you'll be given a list of latest official releases and latest pre-releases. I always recommend going with the latest official releases, which are these ones here. As you can see down here, the latest pre-release is 2021, which I mentioned a couple of minutes ago. You can go with this if you want to, but eventually this version will be moved to the latest official releases when it's been tested and they know it is safe to use. Now, ultimately, I would recommend going whatever the latest version is, but don't be afraid to go back to one of the earlier versions. Some of these are a lot more functional in some ways than others. For example, in Unity 2020, you will no longer have access to the asset store within the engine of Unity itself. You would have to go to the website, but older versions such as 2019, 2018, they do have that in there. So once you have selected whatever version you want to install, you will go next and then you'll be given a list of modules to install and what this is is your target platform think of it as you want to build a game for android you would have to make sure that this is ticked you want to build something for uwp you would make sure that's ticked ios whatever uh, just make sure that everything that you want to build for is ticked if you want to select everything do so if you just want to aim for certain platforms go for that as well uh, once you've done that you will click done and you would go through and it would install. You'll know it's fully installed when you have one of these squares right here. You can see currently I just have four versions of Unity installed on this machine. Uh, I have other machines with different versions installed for different purposes, uh, but it doesn't really matter too much at the moment. Once you've got your desired uh, install set, you would go to projects and this is where all of your projects are stored and you can see I have many many different projects at the same time for different series that I run and also personal projects that I develop my own games for. Now to start your own project you would click the arrow next to new and then you would select whatever version you want to build for. So this gives us a couple of options. This gives us a 2D template, a 3D template, HDRP, which is High Definition at Render Pipeline, and Universal Render Pipeline. It's worth noting that the URP used to be known as LWRP. So if you ever come across that term, LWRP, it actually means the URP. Now these are different render engines that Unity uses. 
It's probably a good thing to note that if this is your first project, you would probably want to stick with 3D to some extent. Um, a lot of people do fall to the misconception that just because you select the high definition render pipeline, things look better in Unity. That is simply not the case. It's all down to how you create the game yourself, how you make it look. And to kind of prove a point to that, uh, we are going to stick with 3D but you do not have to. If you feel more comfortable, if you've used Unity before, you understand how the pipelines work, you probably could select HDRP or URP if you wanted to. It's entirely, entirely up to you. Of this project, for now, we're going with 3D. Uh, you can call your project anything you want, so it would be FPS game or something along those lines, I guess, uh, and the location of where you want to save it. Perfect. Once you've done that, you click on Create. I want to click cancel just to close this off because I already have the project as you can see behind everything. Uh, but once you click create, a couple of minutes later, you'll be presented with this. This is the default view of Unity. And if you've used other engines before, such as CryEngine or something similar, then you'll probably recognize the layout of this to be somewhat familiar. Um, different tools like Blender as well have a similar kind of layout. So if you're used to development, yeah, this is going to look a bit familiar. Now, at this point, I realize, um, yeah, we're here to make a first person shooter. This is the introduction. And basically, the aim for this series is that by the probably fourth or fifth tutorial, we'll actually have something playable, which will look really good, especially if you are an absolute beginner to this. So I'm going to go through a couple of things on this screen, which are going to be very useful to us to begin with. Now, you'll notice there are several different windows. We have the hierarchy. We have a scene. We have an inspector, we have a project console and animation tab. We'll go through some of these, but not necessarily everything in immense detail because we don't need to know every little detail just yet. We want to get into designing and developing a game as soon as possible, but while still learning as we go. So the hierarchy over here on the left is basically a way of storing every game object in a text form. And what do I mean by that? Well, in the scene view, we can see our actual game objects. In this case, we have a camera and I've selected that right here. And you can see it's selected over here in the hierarchy. So everything that technically exists in the scene view is going to exist in the hierarchy. It basically gives us a list view of everything here. Scene view is where we build the game itself. Everything we build in Unity is done within scene view, except for coding, which is done inside, in this case, Visual Studio. Now, Unity is object oriented, but that doesn't mean to say there isn't just as much coding because there really is. There are techniques and ways to design a game without programming, but I consider them a little bit lazy and it's not really a good way to get yourself into the industry. Getting into the industry would mean you need to actually know programming if you're going for a programming role. If you're going for a designing role, Maybe not so much, but for me personally, I like to know as much as possible. Anyway, carrying on, if we were to insert objects into the scene view and use them as something in the game, you would visually see it over here. The game tab is where we can physically play our game in the engine. So rather than have to build every single version of it to test and play, we can actually put it in the engine itself just by pressing this play button up here. Now, when the play button is illuminated in blue, it means that you are in play mode. And this is key if you do change things in the scene view. Problem is, if you're in play mode, as we are now, and change things around in the scene view, they do not save. So for example, here I have this directional light set at position 0, 3, 0, and I'll get into all this in just a moment. But if I select the X axis arrow and move it here, the light will not stay here when we exit play mode. It reverts back to its original place of 0, 3, 0. So just keep that in mind that when we're in the game mode, we're playing the game and nothing can theoretically be changed and saved. But if we have, let's say, a cube here with our player on it running, you'll be able to play it directly in the Unity engine to test. Now, over here, we have the inspector panel. This inspector panel is a great way of storing information that relates to each object within the scene view. And each object will have at least one component. These objects here are what's known as components. 
And as I said, each one will have one, and it is at least the transform. So the transform component gives you the position, the rotation, and the size or scale of each object. Basically, if it doesn't have a transform, it can't exist. It has to exist somewhere in the world around us. So even if we had a brand new object that has no other component, it will still have the transform component. Down here, we have the light component. Now, because this is a light, obviously, it has a light component. And with this, we can change and modify various different aspects of that light, whether it's the color, whether it's intensity, whether it has shadows, all kinds of different things. And each object, depending on what it is, will have a different set of components. So the camera has a camera component. We can modify its field of view. We can modify what it sees, what it can't see, how far it can, you know, all that kind of thing. And if necessary, we can actually add further components just by selecting add component. And there is a multitude of things that we can select to add to a component. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that all these components should be added to one game object. For example, there is no real point in adding any physics components to a camera unless you're trying to do something incredibly crazy. We're not going to be doing something incredibly crazy, at least not for now. So we don't need any physics attached to our camera. Down below, we have the project window. This is where all of our assets are stored. What is an asset? An asset can be anything that's used to develop a game. So it could be a texture, it could be a script, it could be an audio file, it could be a model, it could be pretty much anything. Even a scene is classed as an asset. And what is a scene? A scene is the world that you build your game and you're not restricted to just having one scene, which we have here you can have multiple scenes, scenes that flow to each other, scenes that just have 2D imagery set to it, tons of different things. So yeah, all of this is where we store our assets. Next to it, we have the console. The console is a great way of seeing where you have an error in your game. If you have a problem in a script, it will tell you there is an error and it will more than likely help you address the problem itself, pointing you to where the error is and probably how to fix it. Next thing along, we have the animation tab. Now, some people may not have this by default, and if you don't have it, you can actually get it by clicking this three dots here and click add tab and then click on animation and it will give you this tab right here. Now, good thing about Unity is that if you're not happy with how this looks, you can move things around. If you're not happy with the hierarchy here, you can actually hold the left mouse button down and move the hierarchy over here. You could move the inspector panel over here, switch it all around. Depending on how you want your game to look, you can customize how the view is. You can even detach certain tabs from, the, uh, from everything itself, I should say. So if we take this game tab and pull it into the middle here, it becomes its own object and we can move the whole thing around, resize, do what we need to. And if you need to put it back where it was, just drag it and place it up here. So I'm gonna drag the inspector panel back over here and the hierarchy back over here. And you can see how they snap to each side as we go along. So I'm gonna keep my view like that, I think pretty much. So it's a, a fairly decent widescreen view there. So the last thing we're going to look at is some build settings. So if we go into file, build settings, we can see here, these are the target platforms that we can build for. So if you want to build for Android, you would just click Android and then click on switch platform. It's worth noting that the sooner you click switch platform, the better it becomes in sense of quick and how fast it does it. If you have a massive project and try switching platform later on, it may take a little longer than what it would do at the beginning of a project. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. You could build the whole thing for PC, build it, play it, release it on the store, whatever you want, and then decide, actually, I'm going to make an Android version of this. And then you could actually change it and then build it for Android as well. So keep in mind that at the moment we're going to build for PC, but that doesn't mean say you can't build this for Android or whatever you want to. So that's pretty much everything that we're going to need to know for now. And I think the main thing to remember is that anything you build in Unity can be port, uh, ported to any supported platform. So like I say, if you build for PC, you can still put it on Android. It doesn't really matter too much. So how do we actually go from where we are now to making something, well, kind of cool? Uh, well, for starters, we need to put something inside our scene. And you know what? I think I'm going to bring that inspector panel 
all the way down. It was bugging me there for some reason. So yeah, it's just one of them things, you know, if you are comfortable moving things around. Because the way it was there, my project window was going all the way across. And I wasn't happy with that. So it just goes to show that on the fly, you can switch things around instantly without really thinking. Anyway, let's put some objects in our scene. Let's go to game object. Let's go to cube here, which is in 3D object. See it? Let's click it. And it places it inside our scene. Now, a couple of things to note here. The cube is the most primitive object that you can get in Unity. It's simple. It's great to use. It can be used for so many different purposes. And you'll find so many games use a cube to do so much. And again, I realize that, you know, this is a first person shooting tutorial. And yet all we have is a cube in the middle of our scene. Well, there's a couple of things I want to address here. Notice the position. Position is zero, zero, zero. That means it is dead center of this entire scene. Absolute center. Now we can rotate this if we want to. We can hold the left mouse button down over the X, move the mouse and drag it, or we can physically type a number. So 50 degrees, 100 degrees. Uh, let's change it on the Y to 50 degrees. And you can see it changing here. It's a bit far out. So why don't we double click on the cube here? We've zoomed in. Perfect. I'm happy with that. Let's try rotating this by 45 degrees and we can see, cool, it rotates. Once again, we can actually hover over the letter and rotate on that axis. Let's reset it back to zero, zero, zero. And let's change the scale. Let's have this as a bit of a floor. So it's, this is going to be the basic ground that we can create. Let's change the scale. So let's have the scale as 20 on the X. We'll keep it one on the Y, but we'll change to 20 on the Z or Z. And you can see there it is. That is at least looking a bit more like a floor now. So one thing that I would like to adjust before we go any further and into the next tutorial, I want to change the lighting in this scene. So by default, the lighting can be a little bit too dark uh, when you create a brand new scene. Sometimes it, it's not. Uh, but if we look down here, we can see that this side is just absolutely black and nothing is being cast to it. So let's use the middle mouse wheel and let's hold it down in the scene and shift ourselves this way. And we can see it better. So the middle mouse wheel can zoom in and out. And if you hold it and move the mouse around, you can pan around the scene. Holding the right mouse button will allow you to rotate on the position you are in right now. Just a couple of quick and simple mouse motions that we need. So let's sort this lighting out before we finish. Let's go to window at the top. Let's go to rendering and let's go to lighting. You get a lot of options here. Some we will play with uh, a little later on, but for now we don't need to worry too much about some of them because they are not quite relevant at this stage in development. We just need to make sure that we either tick auto generate or tick or click, I should say, generate lighting. I'm going to auto generate. What this will do is help the global illumination and make things look how they should actually look within Unity. We can now click the X on that, and there we go. Now, the last thing to note is that if we go to our scenes folder right here, we have an asset already. And by default, Unity will load you into this scene. That's the sample scene. So we've made changes to it, Let's save that scene before we go any further. So file, and you can either save, save as, save project. It's not gonna to matter too much. As long as we hit some kind of save, we can save our progress. I mean, yes, we've only made a ground at the moment, but don't worry about that at all. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to bring in a texture we're going to look at materials and we're going to play around with some more objects in this scene to really start trying to create some kind of playable environment that we can get into. And I think if you're a beginner, I recommend playing around with some of these objects and their transform component. Um, also get yourself used to the layout of the respective panels, even adjust them to how you want them to be. And yeah, just play around and See what you can do with Unity if you are indeed brand new. Uh, if you want to know anything, please leave a comment below. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks very much for watching, guys.